Welcome to the mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Deep Mob Learning. A mod by Iteration Funk that can provide you with a mob farm, some very strong weapons and armor, and a way of transmuting items into others. Now let's get into it and drop this voice act. Ah, that's a bit better. So, as I was saying, let's get into this. Now, this mod, as I stated, will have a lot of different uses, but primarily you can use it as a mob farm to get lots of uh, fat loot, as well as uh, some really good, really good armor and weapons, but they're very unique in how they work as well. So let's show you the beginning steps on how to get started in this mod. First, you're going to want to get some redstone. Second, you're going to want to get some blocks of coal, or, well, re you could reverse that if you want, but you take the redstone and you punch it on that block of coal, and you get one of these, soot-covered redstone, and it's crafted by crushing redstone against a block of coal. As you can see, a lot of this has uh, tooltips on it. It adds quite a bit into this mod, and it's pretty darn cool. Uh, now, what you do with that is what's important. Uh, the use for it is basically for crafting. Of course, if you have patchouli installed, which is a mod by Vasky that adds in an instruction manual, uh, which is then, you know, the instruction manual itself was populated by Iteration Funk, but it will therefore have a deep mob learning comprehensive guide, which is going to be very helpful for you in getting along if you don't remember things from uh, such a thing as this bit by bit video. But you can then use your soot covered redstone to make things like soot covered plates, and then you can use those soot covered plates and your soot covered redstone plus some iron to make soot covered machine casings. These are all just building blocks for the rest of the mod. So you've made those, what can you do with them? At this point, you kind of branch off a little bit. Your soot-covered plates can be used to make this a deep learner. Now, the recipe for it is just, you know, not too bad at all. Uh, of course, you have to have some obsidian and whatnot, but it is used to kind of record your information. Uh, if you're familiar with some other uh, mob farming mods, this might be similar, um, like a Soul Shards-esque in a way. You need to have this plus uh, a disk, if you will, to insert into it, or these things here, the little uh, data models, which are made just as such with more of that soot-covered uh, redstone simply, and that gets you a blank one. And then in order to uh, use those with a mob, you can then, you know, just put some of the appropriate drop with it to get the uh, effective one, like a witch or spider and so on. Why would you want these? Each one can drop different things and can give you a lot of different loot as well as potential for using it in an arena, uh, depending upon how far you want to go with this. But this is going to be something handy. You don't need to restrict yourself to one. You can have multiples. When you open it, it says here, no data model found. Please insert a data model. It will collect data when you're placed in the deep learner. In order to collect data, you must deliver the killing blow. So if you are hitting a zombie and then it dies from fire because it's daylight out, that, that's not going to count. But you can therefore make your data model place it in here and you can have up to four of them in in place let's put a couple of these in here and just sorry for this being overlapping but i like to have that option those options available i can always hover over this if it makes it any useful and then we can point at the zombies but it gives you a little brief bit about the zombie and then it tells you how many you've killed the model tier which in this case is faulty that is your default level when you start if i hold sneak or shift in this case while hovering over it it tells you data about this it tells you how much it costs to actually run this in a simulator so that it can automatically kill things for you. But we don't have those set up yet. Before we get there, let's continue on with this. It says defeat six more to reach basic. And that is going to be key for getting into the next section. Now in this case over here, I have a slime data model. This one, if I hit arrow to the left or right, we'll go over there. The slime tells you about it. And it says, Slime's defeated, I've killed 150. Maximum tier achieved. It's self-aware. And yes, a lot of this is very configurable. Please feel free to check the configs as usual. Most mods have a lot more options and uh, availability to change things in the configs. But this basically says it's self-aware. And that means it's going to allow you a lot more. It's going to cost more 150 RF per tick to run this in a simulator so that it can automatically farm loot for you. But it will also get you better loot. So it, it's something to be, well, aware of, if you get my meaning. Uh, so you can have, like I said, up to four of these in there. So if I want, I could have uh, four zombie ones. Let's put a bunch of these in there. 
and they're all going to be faulty because these are brand new ones that were just created. Once again, it's just taking a blank data model and rotten flesh gets me one of those things. They're not too expensive. Uh, you know, just a little bit of mining, and you should be able to come up with these resources. And if you look in the top left, it now says faulty model, six to go, etc. And you can keep on killing mobs to up this level. So if I have a bunch of zombies, which I might actually get myself uh, a decent amount of them instead of just the one, and then I start attacking these guys and spawning in a few of them. Now let's see if I can actually do this. There we go, and then I can just kill each of these guys here. And you can see here it says zombie data model reached the basic tier. Oh, there's one left. <laughs> My bad. Zombie data model reached the basic tier, which what that means is that you've killed enough mobs. I killed six of them, and because I have, <laughs> I've got four of these in here, it's therefore uh, leveled all of these up to the basic tier. Data collected 16 out of 48, and that means to the next one. Data per kill, four. So you're going to have to kill a few more. If you look in the top left, it says eight more mobs to go. You can change how many mobs you need to kill per level and stuff like that if you need to. But in this case, I think we're going to be all right. And yes, uh, it doesn't have to be the same mobs. You can have other ones in here. Like in this case, I could have the slime in there. And then any zombies and slimes I get will start leveling these up appropriately. Why would I want to have multiples of these? It's not really going to help you unless you're, you know, want to give one to a friend or something. Uh, but it can help you to level up your glitch infused sword later on. Uh, just know that now. But for now, you don't need to worry about that because we haven't gotten that far. So, because uh, that's pretty much the end of the mod when you get into making the uh, the weapon and the armor. But it can help you to further advance in other ways of the mod. So now that I've done this and I have a deep learner with my uh, data models that have reached basic or better. Uh, level which goes basic advanced uh, superior and then self-aware you can then move on to the next part which by using some of your other parts like the uh, what was this here the soot covered machine casings to make some of the machines you can then move on to the really good stuff and that's not just running around killing mobs to store information about them in a, a disk drive more or less this is where you actually get to process this information so if I look over here, in here it says this is a simulation chamber. You can also make one of these here, a trial keystone, as well as a loot fabricator. First, we're going to talk about the simulation chamber and the loot fabricator. These are made as such. Simulation chamber, not a very expensive recipe, though you will have had to have fought some ender pearl or some enderman. Uh, loot fabricator as such, but that requires diamonds. Now, you can do without one and still use the other. Uh, to, well, some benefit at least. And I have some Ender IO creative capacitor banks here just to demonstrate how much power is used during these and some uh, basically uh, hoppers hooked up on the back. Now, if I were to use either the simulation chamber or the loot fabricator, they do not accept any kind of item pipes on anywhere except on the top. Uh, I even tried connecting with other connections, hoppers and things like that. And just to demonstrate that, I've got some hoppers feeding into the back. I tried on the front and, and so on, and even underneath did not work. But uh, if I click on here, you can see that there is nothing in here. If I feed items into it, in this case, it would be polymer clay, which is made as such. We'll get you 16 of these things. This is going to be used to kind of create your loot in a way or your overworldian matter. It's kind of like a UU matter style mod where you can transmute uh, a lot of your items into other better items. But if I were to try and feed this in, uh, right now I've got the lever shutting it off, it won't work from this back side. So you can see here this is just sitting here, whereas this one is actually feeding in. Now you will have to have some kind of power source. These uh, simulation chamber and the loot fabricator will accept power sources on all sides as far as I've been able to find out. And of course, you can always pipe things out as they uh, therefore get their you know winnings and stuff processed through. And that's just to show you how things go. Now let me shut off this lever real quick. Now that only had one item come through, and this made overworldian matter. By putting this in here, 
and having your data model, in this case I have advanced ones. You can have better ones. In this case, uh, this one's advanced, this one's superior, this one here is self-aware. What this does is tells you how many uh, item, how many of these things, like simulations it's run, how many mobs it's basically killed. Uh, and uh, pristine chance is the option for getting these little drops here. Little uh, like uh, circular balls next to the uh, data models I have on the side. Now if I look at the zombie one, there's one here, pristine zombie matter, is a possibility as a drop from one of these simulations. But it cannot begin the simulation because it's missing polymer mediums. And it needs to have a zombie data model in place, or some kind of data model, depending upon how you want it to work. But it can't be the faulty kind. It has to be something better, basic or above. In this case, you see if I remove it, it says please insert data model. This is your power that is currently being run on the side. Place that in there, it tells you it's got 64 of 900 collected, etc. So if I want to get this to actually process, I will need to have some of those uh, clay polymer things. Where did I put those? I think I've got some in the back here. And there we go. I just grab those ones. And I can put that in, and it will start processing. Put them up here. I just put one in place, and it starts running a simulation. La run launching runtime, iteration 65 started. You can see it's, it's already run 64. Loading model from chip memory, accessing threat level, engaged enemy, pristine, procurement failed. So you didn't get any pristine drops, but you still would get another drop, a regular piece of overworldian matter. Now, overworldian matter, there's other types of matter. Look over here, we have these. Overworldian, uh, we've got the hellish matter and the extraterrestrial matter. And these represent overworld, nether, and of course the end. Each one of those can be used to craft different things. If I look here and uh, I look at the overworldian matter use for this, you take a couple of those plus string and slime ball can get you some cobwebs. Uh, take one piece of that plus coal and you can get 16 gunpowder. Take some of these ingredients, you can get spider eyes and so on. You can get a ton of stuff. You can even get iron ingots. Four of those plus rotten flesh will get you eight iron ingots. Very useful for a lot of you things. You can get more rotten flesh if you don't have it. You've got pigs around, but you don't have any zombies because you're already, you know, later on you, you've put up so many torches, you don't want to go fighting zombies or something, but you've got a pig farm, you're set, you know, and so on. You can make your own foods. <laughs> you can make prismarine from nether quartz. It's really good. And you can even make other types of matter, but you have to have had to visit them or obtained the minerals from that area. In this case, you have to have netherrack in order to obtain hellish matter. Or you can just process uh, from one of the other models that are from that dimension, and you should be able to get that, like a, a wither data model. Uh, actually, I don't want to do that. Let's look at a blaze data model. Use for this one here is, if you look, it will give you potentially hellish matter and a possibility for pristine blaze matter. And before I get into the pristine stuff, just know that you know each one of these could potentially give you different kinds depending upon the uh, dimension that they're from, and that that should be more or less an important thing for transmuting. Now, the real loot that you can get is not actually in that. You can see this thing is still running. It's taking about 80 RF or 4 gen energy or whatever energy you want to call it per tick, and you can run it further and so on. So if I put in, uh, let's put... Uh, 16 in this one, and we'll put 16 in this one, and we'll put uh, 16 in this one. You'll see that each one's running about 80 and so on. Nothing really too fantastic with it. I mean, if you look here, it says it's only going to cost 80 per tick in order to run it. It depends on which one it is. This one here, the slime data model is 150. The witch going to be 120. The wither skeleton going to be 880. An enderman, 512, and so on. So each different mob is going to run you a different cost. So it is not dependent upon the tier that the... Uh, uh, data models are currently set at. So with that in mind, you may have a possibility of getting pristine zombie matter. With the basic setup, now this one has advanced a tier because I switched it out by accident. It was originally basic. You're not likely to get any pristine matter. But if you go into the advanced, you have a slight chance of getting some. You can see I've got six. I threw in a stack originally and you have 11% chance of getting some. This one here, superior, you have a 24% chance of getting pristine matter. So that's up to 21. This one is up to 31, and it's the self-aware, which is a 42% chance. 
Now, what is the pristine matter used for? This is where the loot fabricators come into play, my friends. This stuff here. If I just look at this one zombie matter, I'm actually going to take all this out. We're going to hit what's the use for this in a loot fabricator, which let's go over to one of these here. You can see I have similar field. We've got the power on the side. We've got the processing here and only one spot that you can put things in. If I don't have a hopper being used, let's let's actually uh, break this hopper here so that this, when it runs its next iteration, it should have some items potentially drop up here. That is its input for the polymer clay. And then the output is going to be these two areas here. One is going to be the option for the pristine matter, and the other is going to be for the overworldian nether, or uh, the end matter, if you will, or extraterrestrial, I guess. With the loot fabricator, it's just one item, and you can put your loot in there. Do I put this in? No, it does not go in there. That's actually, I don't know how I just duplicated that. Did I do that by accident? I pro No, I double clicked and it gathered all of them in my inventory. You take your pristine matter and you put it in here. And then it gives you a list, dependent upon the pristine matter it is. In the case of something like, let's say, slimes, it's only going to give you the option for one item, slime balls. But in the case of a zombie, you can choose potatoes, rotten flesh, iron ingots, or carrots. Well, I could care less about all these ones except for iron ingots. So let's choose that. And that's what you get, 16 iron ingots, which I have currently being piped out into a chest down below. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. Click to remove the auto crafting so you can auto eliminate that, stop it from doing that automatically when those go in. Or you can just automatically have it so that once it's done, the next one you put in will automatically choose that same one. You can unselect it if you want, you can choose another one, etc. It's just really that easy to do. And so, therefore, you can see you can transmute things, you can get massive amounts of loot from these. The higher the level it is, the more mobs you've killed, the better. Now, there are two ways of going about killing mobs. One is just going around killing mobs. The other is using the third machine, the Trial Keystone, which is going to be very, very useful. And if I put this in here, let's actually choose something. You can see that uses up a decent amount of power. I felt I should mention that before I moved on to the Trial Keystone, is that these will use some, some power to process. Uh, just hovering over it here in uh, the uh, JEI does not actually tell you uh, an estimation of how much it uses, but this doesn't, this is just max power. You can feed it in slowly and it'll process slowly and that, there, there you go. But I mean, you saw how fast this runs, even though it's got maximum power being fed into it, it's still going to run at a certain speed and you don't, you know, you're not going to get like massive super speedy stuff. So moving on from these, going to the trial keystone, this item here, let's actually bring it up here. Recipe for it is as you see here. It's a little bit expensive, but it is a place it and you don't need to worry about replacing it anymore because it's reusable. Something that is not reusable is this trial key. This is made with two diamonds, ender pearl, and two iron nuggets. Yes, you can get these from these different uh, possibilities of simulation chambers and loot fabricators, but the key itself, and of course that, that would pretty much mean that you'd have to have gone to the end for most of those items, but the key is actually, well, it has to be attuned, and it can only be attuned if you have a key in your inventory, and you have a data model in your deep learner, and you end up hitting a mob of that type. So if I get rid of this key, let's get another fresh key, and I take a deep learner in it, I currently have slimes and zombies. So if I put down a zombie, and I kill it, it then... Uh, says the trial key was attuned to the zombie. Oh, notice that my glitch infused sword has grown in power, by the way. 16 now. Current damage increase. Excellent. Okay, but if you look there, it does say trial key was attuned to zombie. That's the important part that I'm talking about. This, therefore, doesn't really do too much about this. Yes, it, it did increase the data collected and all that stuff, but it's what it did to the trial key. If I hold shift now, it says the key is attuned to zombies. Key tier basic because that is the tier that I have for the zombies. They're all basic level right now. So if I put down uh, a slime and then I kill something, whoops, but I have to have one of those keys in my inventory. Let me grab one. There we go. Because I've got that data model in there, it says trial key was attuned to slime. Sounds the same, but it's very different. Reason being is that the, the slime data model is at self-aware. And that means 
that this is now a self-aware key tier. And then it has a possibility for different affixes to this. Something like Blaze Invaders. There's a possibility during the trial of mobs that you will be fighting uh, that blazes might spawn in. Thunderdome. It's likely going to cause a thunderstorm. Empowered glitches. You will probably run into glitches, those uh, weird guys at the beginning of the video that were standing on either side of me, and they shoot ranged attacks at you. They don't have very much health, but they shoot ranged attacks very rapidly. Uh, then you've got regen party. This is where sometimes when you kill a mob, it will drop uh, a, like a, a lasting regen effect in an area, which could be used by you, but it could also be used by just about any of the mobs in the area. So it could make things a little bit more challenging. But that is pretty much going to be read, readable, excuse me, in the guidebook if you so want to check that out uh, that I was talking about before, which there you go, deep mob learning, which, you know, just make it with some of this stuff. And if you want to start one of these, you place down that trial keystone and then you put in the key. Now I'm going to start with a regular zombie party right now. We're going to put this in and it says, please insert a tuned trial key to start a trial. So if I grab this key, yeah, actually here, I will hover it. So you can see at the top left there, it has a little key symbol. So if I put this here, I click to delete. No, I don't want to delete that. I just want, I'm going to shift click it because I'm in, I thought I was in creative. Oh, that's right. It is going to delete it. I put the, the key in here and it will actually end up using the key up. That's why it's uh, it's actually um, uh, oh, use it and lose it item. I can get the key back just by grabbing it back out or you can shift click it into place, whatever. And I can start the trial and get rewards of pristine zombie matter in this case. Now, if I switch this out and put this other key in place, that is, uh, you know, that one was uh, a lot more dangerous. It's self-aware with lots of, of uh, slimes and so on. I have a much greater reward. I can get 18 pristine slime matters and three corrupted glitch hearts, which is going to be a key ingredient for making weapons and armor. Therefore, you can gain multiple benefits, but that's not all. You can gain uh, another benefit in that case. I keep grabbing these darn learners by accident. Let's put this in here, and we'll take a look at my deep learner at the moment. I've got zombies in here. They all say data collected 24, and that's it, right? So if I start this trial, that means that I can use my weapon or uh, sword or whatever to kill these guys. Let's start the trial. There's going to be two waves. Oh, boy. And you just need to kill them. And then you gain levels by doing so. So you're actually spawning mobs. That's the first wave. And then you are able to up your data level at the cost of a couple diamonds, and a pearl, and a couple nuggets. I heard somebody. Oh, hi. Okay, there we go. And it tells you on the right there how many opponents you have left as well. Just keep in mind that if you have mobs, like uh, in the case, uh, oh, see, there's the regen party. One of them died and it caused a regen cloud. I might as well stand in it and gain a little bit of regen before it goes away. Um, but uh, <laughs> the the mobs that might f pop in on the key, uh, like in this case, it says blaze invaders. The blazes that may spawn in there don't count. <laughs> Same thing with the empowered glitches but they're going to be uh, just causing you all sorts of trouble anyway. So I was able to complete that. I got the benefit of the extra zombie matter, which is great. Now I don't have any of the slime uh, pristine matter in here, but we are going to do one more. We're going to put the trial key in and you should see now that the corrupted glitch hearts are a potential, are, are a reward, not a potential reward. They are a reward. Uh, now the blaze invaders, you might not see any blazes. You might not see thunder and lightning. You might not see empowered glitches, but you probably will see at least one of them, if not multiples of them. You could see all of them. It's a random chance. It's not like guaranteed to happen. And if you do kill glitches, you still have a possibility of getting the corrupted glitch hearts to drop from them, which once again are going to be used for crafting these materials. So Let's click the start trial, and you can see there's seven waves, which is going to make this a little bit more challenging. Uh, in fact, before I do that, I'm going to have a little nom, and then we're going to start the trial. And it says here, trial is currently active. Rewards will drop upon completion. So I'm just going to kill these guys. They're not your average slimes. They're not going to spawn more slimes, because that just makes it a little bit weird. Um, each one would count as a, a critter that's been killed. But in this case, we're, I'm just going to finish them off easily with my very strong and overpowered sword that is also gaining me data models. Oh, there's the thunder and lightning. But 
thankfully I'm in a savanna area, so it doesn't actually rain on me. <laughs> doesn't mean I'm not going to get hit, though. Maybe I'll have a little bit of food before I continue on. There we go. Wave three out of seven. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is wave four. There we go. Oh, there's one of the blazes. And you can just, if you can keep up with killing these guys before they kill you, great job. Great job. So, next wave, wave five. They are not going to get much easier, actually. They're, they're only going to get more difficult. If you have a ranged weapon, that's definitely going to help you out. Especially if you have things like witches popping in. Let's run over here get some food. And see if I can kill these guys. Oh, man, because of the, the, the rainstorm. Okay, there we go. Witch is down. And I've got a blaze. This is not good. <laughs> I hope I don't die while trying to do a demonstration. And the zombie just happened to walk in because it's a thunderstorm. Therefore, you know, makes spawn spots nearby. Let's see if I can kill these last ones here. And, oh gosh, there's not much left. Ow. Ow. That hurts. And I don't think I'm wearing any armor. Uh, no, I'm not. This is not a smart thing to do. Best to wear some armor. And this isn't the, the most difficult mob to actually fight. There, there are obviously more difficult ones to fight, as you might have guessed. Grab that. Oh, gotta kill the blaze, because if he hits me at range, I'm doomed. I can't run away. Like I am right now. To get some regen. Okay, let's kill these guys <laughs> as quick as I can. Oh gosh, they're spawning right on top of me. This is terrible. Something I did not mention is that as part of this... Oh. As I was saying, as part of this, and I'm in creative mode now, so I can just pick up all this stuff that I had in my inventory. It's kind of a big mess. Um, <laughs> is that part of this trial is that it needs to be in a 15 by 15 area. I did not mention that before. I apologize. That is something that uh, should have been mentioned and see if I can get this last one. You notice that the trial has stopped, though. I died. So you'd have to restart the entire trial. But if any of those glitches show up, uh, those uh, little little guys here, let's actually see if I can spawn one in. And then you guys can see what they look like. And if I am... Actually, I might put on some regular diamond armor because this is going to hurt. <laughs> see if I can change my game mode to zero. And they will start shooting you nonstop. Yeah, pretty much. So you're going to want to kill them quickly, and they might drop one of these. Thankfully, they did. Excellent. And get your corrupted glitch heart. Now, something else I was talking about before was with my deep learner. I had that in my inventory. It doesn't have to be on your hotbar. It then would increase the uh, stats on here. If you look here, slime's defeated. I've now killed 200. And... I've got data collected 40 out of 300, and this has gone up to advanced level. So my uh, zombie uh, data modules have gone up and so on, which is really good. Now, this is how it can get even better. If you take your corrupted glitch heart and you smash it on some obsidian, boop, just like that, you get unstable glitch fragments, which then you combine with lapis and gold in uh, a, a pool of water. And if you're not sure how to do this, if you look at your uh, unstable glitch hearts, let's look at the, the recipe for this. I click recipe and it doesn't say anything. It shows you how you can get them uh, by using, you know, your trial keys and stuff in a trial keystone. Then you definitely need to look at the next item, unstable glitch fragments. You can go backwards because, you know, if you want to make some of these items like a helmet, you look up the recipe for it. It's made out of the glitch infused ingots. You look at the recipe for that. There's an information tab. That tells you, drop some fragments, lapis, and gold, and gets into a body of water, and hope for the best. And it goes on to tell you a little bit of more of a story about that whole thing. But when it says fragments, it means these fragments, unstable glitch fragments, not the corrupted glitch hearts. That's what you need to convert into, uh, is, is used to turn those into. Anyway, throw those in to the water, and then you take some lapis. And, oops, I just deleted that by accident. Let's actually drop those and then some gold. You only need to have an equal amount, like one to one, like one ingot of gold, one ingot uh, or one piece of lapis and one of the uh, the unstable glitch fragments that you had previously smashed up against the uh, obsidian. And you'll get the ingots. 
Where'd they go? There they are. Glitch infused ingots, which then you can craft in a regular crafting table to make the different sets of armor and so on. So let's get all this stuff off my inventory here. I'll be back once I straighten my inventory out. Hold on. All right, there we go. And the recipes for these different pieces of armor, as well as the the uh, sword, are going to pretty much be very similar to a vanilla recipe, except for the sword is a little bit more unique with iron nuggets, stick, and you know your two piece, your two ingots, the uh, helmet, the uh, chest plate, leggings, and boots are all going to be pretty much the same. Now they're comparable to diamond armor, but they also give you a lot more. So if you look here, three armor, three toughness. Diamond boots, three armor, two toughness. And then the uh, the leggings and the chest plate strangely are, are reversed. Like the leggings, you get eight and three. This is six and two. This one you get six and three. This one you get eight and two. So <laughs> it's kind of funny how they're switched. But there's a little tiny bit more toughness on these items. But otherwise, they're better in general. Uh, and for a set bonus, if anything. And then the glitch infused sword is better because it's a 10 damage and 1.6 attack speed as opposed to a diamond sword of 7 and 1.6. It is fully enchantable, just like a diamond sword is, and they all have different extra abilities. The glitch-infused greaves, uh, leggings, chest plate, and helmet all grant the same thing if you have the whole set. Uh, as you see here, it says bonus while full set is equipped, and they're disabled during trials, but 18% chance to drop two pristine matter when a data model gains data. So anytime that you've got a data model that is increasing in level because you're killing things not during a trial, you will have a possibility of gaining pristine matter, which then you can just turn into massive amounts of loot. Number two, flight and immunity against fall damage. So you can see I'm in survival mode. I have flight and I take no damage. It's that simple. It's really good. <laughs> but of course, that is going to be disabled during a trial. Of which I did neglect to mention that the trial needs to be in a 15 by 15 area. So if you look in here and I take out anything that's in there, please insert an attuned trial key. If I put in some kind of trial key, it's actually going to say current key is not attuned and so on. But if you first put this down and there's something in the way, like a torch, click on here, something is blocking the trial area. Make sure a 15 by 15 by 10. It's 15 by 15 wide and 10 from this trial key zone, including this block up 10 blocks up is clear everything else is fine you can actually put up walls and all this stuff i can put a torch at the edge of the map if i want or i can put glowstone underneath this if i want it to be lit up and so on but otherwise it should be just fine now i put it in there it doesn't give me that warning it just says that it needs to have a trial key with it being attuned and that's pretty much it i mean then you can take all the all the great stuff you can get from your glitch infused sword which oh my goodness i didn't mention this is kind of one of the bigger things here is that the uh, data gained from the demise of a mob is doubled when data is gained there is also a small chance that the sword will get a permanent damage increase so as you gain levels killing mobs to increase your deep learner abilities, your sword will level up. And this is before it's actually enchanted or anything like that. So as you notice here, the current damage increase, and that's damage, like uh, 16 half hearts, if you will, is, is how much it'll do. Max of 18 on top of the 10 that it starts with. So if you look here, 10 to start with, and this is a plus 16 on top of that, it can still go up two more to a total maximum before enchanting of 28 points of damage. Pretty darn impressive. And it can help you just get more stuff. As well as, I have flight, fall resistance. This mo These armor pieces are fully enchantable like you normally could with other stuff. And it's just really, really strong, really interesting mechanic and a lot of fun. Uh, especially if you end up getting uh, a bunch of the uh, pristine matter. You can put that you know, in there and choose the items that you want. I need some carrots today, or I need a stack of zombie mat zombie flesh so that I can take that zombie flesh uh, plus a bunch of the overworldian matter. And let's let's put that in here plus a bunch of this, and I can make a bunch of iron ingots. Pow! Almost two stacks, just like that. <laughs> it's it's tremendous how much fun this actually has been uh this is a really interesting mod i hope you guys have been enjoying it give iteration funk a thank you from me and from yourselves don't forget to check out our twitch channel 10 p.m most evenings you should see us there streaming and uh, we also have other platforms discord patreon and so on you guys can join up and check us out till next time folks 
Man säger 